Hi, welcome to Jessica. My name is Jessica Rector and I'm your host today. Today we're going to talk about spinal cord injuries and how they impact people and the things around them. Please welcome my guests today, Sharon Butler and Rick Gunzik. Rick, you were injured when you were 15 years old with a spinal cord injury. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, it was back in 1980. Me and my father were on the way to a uh, car convention and the car went out of control somewhere in Gallup, New Mexico and the um, car rolled several times and I woke the next morning completely paralyzed from the neck down. It's an odd feeling because you feel like your whole body is asleep. You kind of, kind of like when your, your hand falls asleep or something and you feel that buzzing feeling through your body. That was kind of the whole feeling that was going through my body. And it's just, it's, it's, an, it's a weird feeling because all of a sudden you just can't move. Basically you're laying, right. there, on a, laying there on a bed and you're, you're completely helpless immediately. And it's just, it's kind of a weird feeling because at first you have a feeling that, okay, maybe this will go away in a day or two and I'll just hop up. Right. But um, unfortunately it doesn't happen. And uh, my, my father was also in the car accident with me and he, was, he, he also uh, broke a vertebrae but it didn't affect his spinal cord. Because um, what a lot of people don't realize when you do break your neck is there's certain, there's different levels that you can break your neck at, for instance. Like he broke his neck, but it didn't affect his spinal cord. Um, but I broke my neck at um, what they call, they have different levels in your, in your neck and, and how they determine what you are. For instance, um, they, they consider myself a quadriplegic, which means you can't use all four limbs properly. Um, okay. Many people will see paraplegics, which they'll see someone in a wheelchair and they can use their arms, and for all, for all intents and purposes, they look normal, but they don't know what they have. Sometimes people think, oh, they have polio or something. But, right. Um, typically, they've probably broken their neck, because um, spinal cord injury is a lot more prevalent than people realize. Uh, with Christopher Reeves, probably people, you know, it came a little more to the forefront. Exactly. But um, uh, it, the statistics are pretty amazing. Every 30 minutes, another American is paralyzed. That's so, amazing. Yeah, so essentially, two people an hour are rendered almost helpless, because when you're paralyzed, you become almost helpless. And what they do is they, they determine it by levels. For instance, um, I broke what's called vertebrae C5, right. which means it's the fifth ver cervical vertebrae in your neck. And um, what does that mean in layman's terms, though? Basically, if, if you look at a if you look at a spinal cord, and you know a lot of people have seen them like in a doctor's office right. or whatever, you have um, I'm not sure how many, but there's about 30 different vertebrae. Mm -hmm. And you start, and you have the cervical vertebrae, which go down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then there's another level called the thoracic vertebrae. And a lot of times, when you break your neck, you generally break it in the cervical area. So it usually renders you um, your arms useless and your legs useless. And it depends on the level. For instance, I mentioned Christopher Reeves. He broke C1, right. which controls your lungs and your um, heart. Which is at the it's top? real high, yes, okay. right at the base of your head. Okay. And um, that, that certain where the nerves come out of the spinal cord that controls your, your lungs and your heart. So that's why he has trouble breathing. As you go okay. lower, you get more um, function. And so mine was broken at C5. As you go lower down, you get more hand function. And as you go lower, you get more function in the middle of your body, that, that thing. So a lot of times, if you see someone in a wheelchair and they can use their hands, right. but you know they were in a, and had a spinal cord injury, they probably broke their back. And that they determine it by how low it is up and down, up and down the spinal cord. Um, That's fascinating because I think a lot of people don't realize, don't know all the details of what exactly entails a spinal cord injury. I mean, like you said, a lot of people got more familiar with it when Christopher Reeves had his accident. But before that, people, I don't think, knew about it unless it directly affected them. Exactly. And by bringing it out to the forefront and saying, hey, this can happen to you, it happens, like you said, to a person, ever, someone every 30 minutes, 30 minutes right. and it can happen. It doesn't necessarily have to a happen just in a car accident or riding a horse. No, many of the people we meet, are, it's amazing how simple it is to break a neck. Um, there, there was one, one gentleman we talked to who was a doctor. He actually broke his neck turning. He asked his nurse for a scalpel in the, in the right. operating room. He turned his head. To, she didn't, had, didn't hand it to him immediately, so he turned his head to wonder where she was. And broke, his and, neck broke his neck. and fell to the ground. I know um, two different um, young men who broke their neck because they had long hair, just whipping their hair back. And really? Then, yeah. Oh then, my wow, gosh, that's how amazing! Simple it is to break it. Um, we uh, we were talking to a guy um, just the other day who broke his neck playing frisbee. So he was diving for the frisbee. So it's amazing how easy it is to break your neck. I mean, a lot of people yes. break their neck surfing, that kind of thing. Um, right. Diving into pools happens a lot in the summertime. 
So Sharon, why don't you tell us how it affected you as a family member and how you had to change certain aspects of your life, if you did at all have to change them? Well, the very first thing that happened, I know exactly, and it's like every time I drive past the area where I was when I got the phone call, Oh yeah. because my mom and I were going to go out to dinner because my dad and my brother were on a trip, and so we were free right. two women, and I was driving home, and I got the call, and all I could hear in the background was were people screaming. And it was just, it was terrifying. And you never know what's going to happen to you, like exactly. we said. If it's one person every half hour, one person every half hour is getting that phone call that they're saying, your family member was in an accident. Right. And in our particular case, the, the phone call was really straight and to the point and rather rude. It was the call to my mom that said, your son, her only son, who plays baseball, who happens to be, he was so good at baseball that the scouts were scouting him at age 15, telling him not to use his arm because he was such a good baseball player. Mm -hmm. he, was, he was a pitcher. And we would practice in the backyard pitching into like, you know, the big, um, we put a tire on the wall. Right. And we'd be like breaking the fence with his pitches. That's how good he was. Mm -hmm. And they said to my mom, your son is paralyzed for life and your husband's a vegetable. And at that point we thought my dad was a vegetable. And honestly speaking, the accident happened in New Mexico and we're here in California. And to get to the accident and get to where they were, my mom had to rush around, get a credit card, right. do all that stuff and, and do things that, you know, maybe some other families when that happens to them can't afford to do and can't get to their loved ones who are in the accident. Exactly. But I mean, it was a good thing that I was with my mother because she was freaking out. She like left the credit card at the front desk where she, you know, she gets, on, yeah, she gets on the plane and we're sitting in the plane and the plane's about to take off and she goes, oh my God, my credit card, I don't know where it is. And she starts freaking out and she's crying and freaking. And so I had to calm her down and then we tr we got the airline to go ahead right. and get the car. It was a mess. But um, long story short, we actually get to the hospital and Rick looked actually pretty good. I mean, he was cleaned up and he was in what was called, it's called traction. And I'm sure he can explain what more traction is when you break your neck, how they have you because he's in a bed that actually we have to spin him around every two hours. He has to flip and it's so they don't get bed sores. Right. And he was cleaned um. up and looked pretty good. My dad, you know, our dad, he was, he looked like he, was in a monster movie. I mean, literally his whole face was stitched back together. We were told that um, his neck was pulled completely forward so they could see his brains. I mean, it was, that's why they thought he was going to be a vegetable. Right. Um, he was released from the hospital two weeks later uh, in a miracle completely That is fine. a miracle, actually. But we did find out later after he went for um, his, his work made him go for a full physical before they allowed him to come back right. to work and they found he had a broken neck. So he was walking around with a broken neck. So that's another thing is somebody can have an injury and not realize they have right. a spinal injury and turn and look the wrong way. And if my dad would have just looked the wrong way at the Slightly. wrong time, he could have been paralyzed for life. But there's a reason he wasn't. I mean, he, right. he and my mom together are taking care of him completely. How it changed my life, I know for a fact that eventually my parents are now in their, in their mid 70s. Mm -hmm. And literally people look at them and think they're in their 50s because I think it's because they have a lot of exercise <laughs> taking care of him because they have to do everything for him literally. And I know when I married my husband, I said, look, this is what's gonna happen. At a point in my life, my brother's gonna come live with us. There's gonna be that point. Right now I'm in a house that's a, sink, that's a two story but no bedroom downstairs. So we're in, right now in the process of purchasing a house together where it has a downstairs bedroom. And I am divorced now, so it's like my boyfriend knows, guess what, this is what's gonna happen. Yeah. If you don't like it now, there's a door because my brother's family is more important to me. Right. So there's a lot of things that changes about your life because you know that you're gonna have a certain situation coming up eventually. My 11 year old son is totally, you know, he knows about wheelchairs. He knows not to stare at people in wheelchairs and that kind of thing because you don't know what happened to them. And right, exactly. if anything, be sympathetic to them. If they need help, don't push it though. I mean, because you don't know whether to help them with the door or not. Because I know sometimes I'll ask yeah, Rick, exactly. I'll say, do you want me to get that for you? And he'll look at me like, no, I can do it myself. Like that was stupid. And that's just it. It's, it's a fine line. How do you know being the public and not, you know, being around someone who is in a wheelchair, how do you know, you know, do I help them? Do I let them do it themselves? You don't want to be insensitive or inconsiderate. Right and not get the door, but then you don't want them to feel like, okay, do they think I can't get the door? Yeah, so what, what, do you, what do you want what, us to do? <laughs> so, I mean, as the, what, what does the public, what should the public do? Should they just ask, you know, can no, I get the door for a fine you? Line. Like when I went to college, it's a perfect example, because everybody's real helpful, and they just say, hey, do you need help with that? You know, just a simple, hey, do you need help with that? Instead of, a lot of, every so often you'll get someone that's a little rambunctious or something, and they might just go ahead and do it. Right. And sometimes they just get in the way more, because you're used to doing it so often that you know, you've gotten to the point where you, you're, you're trying to do it as much as you can.